What's up? My name is Donovan. You can call me Coaxed. And today I would like to talk about the major changes coming to Deceive Inc. Uh, really quick, they do have a note that these changes uh, are a work in progress and will possibly change in the future. So keep that in mind. The first change we see is the heat system. Uh, if you were to kill an NPC, this will give you vulnerability. The first heat level is a 30% vulnerability for 12 seconds. The second heat level is 50% for 15 seconds. And the third is 100% for 20 seconds. These heat levels will naturally vent off as the player goes back into cover. So you'll just simply have to wait and lay low for a little bit for those to go away. I think this will be a good uh, addition to the game because as of right now, you just have people just killing NPCs and the only downside to that is you're out of cover which there's a lot of ways to get back into cover in this game so i feel like that'll change the pace of the game a little bit the next big thing is uh, the intel that you collect around the map right now every player on the team can collect the same intel building an abundance of intel and just speeding through the game uh like they say right here it'll slow down the game uh, and break the neck of speed unlocking vault terminals in the phase essentially it'll just slow the gameplay down a little bit which i think will be a good a good change of pace uh not too big but i think it will be a good addition the team revive mechanic is up next now this i have mixed thoughts on uh, let's just go over it really quick so you'll be able to be revived three times in a match now compared to once and each revive will take down your max health the first revive will be 75 max health the second 50 max health and the third 30 max as they say here it can be frustrating where you can sometimes be taken out very early and you have to wait and watch the the rest of your teammates play the rest of the game i'm actually pretty excited to see how this will play out i think it'll be a good and a bad thing but we'll just have to wait and see next we have the vault terminals room rebalancing wow that's a mouthful uh we are taking changes to overall economy on the terminals field upgrades and key cards here's what you can expect i think these changes will be pretty important and a good change as people won't be just speeding through but let's see what they are rooms that contain a vault terminal will never have a purple or orange key card rooms that contain a vault terminal will no longer have a purple field upgrade chest rooms that do not have a vault terminal will have a guaranteed key card either purple or orange rooms that do not have a vault terminal will have a purple chest purple rooms in the vault will now have two chests per room green rooms have a buff spawn pool to make them more useful in the overall flow as they say here the overall goal of these changes is quite simple making finding rooms without a vault terminal much more rewarding on to the next now these are stated as they are just general changes uh they are going to be doing jump tweaks <laughs> is what they said one of the sources of frustration we saw in the launch is air strafing. Uh, making They're going to just essentially make it uh, reducing the, the control you have while you're jumping in the air. So strafing is not so hard to track. Uh, solo matches will have an XP buff. You got character hitboxes. I think this is going to be pretty interesting. Let's see. To make fights more reliable, we are tweaking hitboxes and hit regions a bit. Hitboxes for all agents have been adjusted to ensure they are all fair with overall silhouettes and a bit more permissive on smaller characters. To go along with this, we are removing limb damage from arms. This is huge. If you don't know, <clears throat> limb damage is the weakest damage in the game. And when you're shooting somebody like facing you and you think you're hitting them in the chest, you're actually just hitting them in the limbs, doing the least amount of damage as possible. Because some of the characters in this game just hold their arms straight out in front of them. I think uh, Madame Zhu does this. But nonetheless, we move forward. To go along with this, we're removing limb damage from arms. Limb damage will now entirely be lower body damage. Hitting a player with the waist up will result in a body hit. We feel the addition to arm shots... Uh, would lead to frustrating inconsistencies especially on some characters that have a prominent arm presence in their silhouettes from up front like i said i think this is going to be a great change and you will definitely notice your shots doing more damage where you are actually hitting them uh, they have a little bit of recoil work uh, the direction was to make the recoil more snappier and more immediate uh, i don't really i didn't really notice anything bad with the current version of this but we'll see how this turns out uh they're doing you know audio changes some sound tweaks a bunch of technical stuff i don't understand 
Uh, but it's always good to hear about a game changing their sound. It could be good, it could be bad, we'll see. They're also stating that they tweak the overall range of weapon sounds on per weapon basis. This means the lower powered weapons won't be heard from as far away as powerful weapons. Uh, this should help the soundscape feel more diverse and add an interesting wrinkle in the pinpointing the location of fights. This will be good. It's always good to improve the, the sound in games. NPC Danger Range. The radius in which NPC are scared from weapon fire has been tweaked to better account for map verticality. Previously, NPC could be scared from fights happening pretty high above them or below. This creates a lot of confusion when you see a scared NPC running around uh, because of a fight that is not happening on your floor. This does happen quite a bit and I'm glad to see this change. This next one, ink menu preview, is going to be a nice quality of life change. You're going to be able to preview your ink on the weapons that you choose. Previously, you were able to do this kind of in the main menu. You could turn your character and see the gun, how it would look with the ink on it. You could also see it in the pregame lobby, but this kind of just gives you a better general idea of how it will look. Also, I see they have a white and black one here. I didn't see this in game before. Maybe I'm just blind. I don't know. Uh, hopefully they bring a white and black one in. And if they already do have one, I'm definitely choosing that as those are my favorite colors. This next one is the result screen rework. The mission report screen has seen a rework to make it clearer on what you've achieved in a match and tell you exactly what you've progressed in in different progression systems. You will also see the exact amount of credits you earned in the round. No more guessing. So just another quality of life change here. The EXP source prompt. This will just be telling you the XP value of your actions during a match so you don't have to guess anymore. Another quality of life rework. Uh, the HUD rework. Now this is pretty interesting. It does look a little bit more clear. You have your health bar. You also have your heat. I'm assuming this is your heat uh, levels right here. One, two, three. Yeah, it's got to be your heat. I don't really notice a big change. Um, but it does just seem a lot cleaner. Next, we have increased gadget drop range. Pretty self-explanatory. The range in which you can drop placeable gadgets has been increased. This should help not gooing yourself. I've had a huge problem with this. I goo myself way too often, more than I'd like to admit. So this will be very nice. Uh, carrier empowered nav mode tweaks. Visual changes for much better reading. Nice. So you're going to be able to scan players better when you have the case essentially you're going to be able to see mimic players while scanning with the briefcase you'll see spies instead of npcs so this is pretty nice melee reliability rework improve melee reliability in a variety of scenarios especially when trying to hit someone close to a wall this will be pretty nice i hope they also fix cavaliers melee when i used cavaliers melee it feels like i just skip across the screen instead of like lunge toward them next you have the vault terminal agent alert uh, if two agents of the opposite teams are in the same purple room with an active vault terminal inside, the, the vault terminal screen will glow red and play a short alarm sound. This goes both ways. Campers waiting by a vault terminal will alert the person entering, and someone looting a purple room and getting a visit will know a rival spy just entered. This alarm is disabled as soon as the vault terminal is turned off. A uh, raised account level cap. With this update, the new level cap is now 300. Levels 200 to 300 will require more XP than before, and a new completionist ink awaits you at level 300 to show off your insane spy skills. Tweaks to cover regeneration timings. We are making basic cover regeneration a little bit easier, especially when standing still. While blowing your cover should have consequences, true, uh, the current timing was long enough that even perfectly executed plans result in you getting third partied after the fact. I never noticed too much of a problem with this, but we'll see how this plays out in game. Next, we have the training range. We'll introduce the DPS screen. This will be super nice. So you know how much damage you're doing. You get an idea of how many shots it will take rather than just reading uh, spreadsheets. So that will be super nice. Uh, a little bit of map changes here. Silver Reef added props to provide in cover in the submarine glass corridors to provide more interesting fights in the extraction phase. You got Diamond Spire added visual cover in the main hall ground floor to make it less of a danger zone. Added cover to the ground floor courtyard. Added new exits to some meeting rooms that only had one entrance. Nice. Fragrant Shore, fix doors that could not be opened on the first floor of the hotel. Replace the purple door on Terminal E room balcony by a one-way window openable from the inside. Replaced free windows into purple and blue rooms with one-sided openable windows like in a hard cell. Okay, so just a, an, another map change here. Keep an eye out for agents.
more intel will be dropping in the coming days so yeah deceive ink catalog one update brief hopefully they don't make too many changes to this as all of these same all of these changes seem pretty good uh, i'm excited to see how the game plays out after this as i said i'm having a ton of fun playing this game in the meantime uh, all these changes are welcome especially the quality of life changes uh let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the changes do would you like anything else changed uh do you like or dislike the changes uh let me know down in the comments below and that is it for the video today and uh uh bye